All right, everyone, Donald Trump's polling numbers keep going up. He's now approaching 63, and that's in the aggregate, actually, aggregated national polling. He's also rising, it seems, in Iowa now, so he's getting a last-minute spike. If this carries over to New Hampshire and South Carolina, it's basically a done deal. Like, I can't see anyone else really having any momentum whatsoever. For a while, it looked like, okay, DeSantis is at least going to have a decent second-place showing in Iowa. He probably gets a boost from that. He makes second in New Hampshire. Haley drops out, probably endorses DeSantis at that point. And then basically going into Super Tuesday, that's the knockout punch. Uh, you could also have me be wrong, and Trump uh, outperforms expectations in Iowa due to technical incumbency, which, I mean, it's a possibility. I just assume that the polling there is going to be screwy, because historically that's the case in Iowa. But now... With a last-minute spike in Iowa virtually ensuring victory there, and a monumental, you know, again, incumbent-like lead in national polling, basically the GOP electorate has already made up their minds, um, and they're the ones primarily in the primaries. Uh, many of them are closed, so you have to register as a Republican to even vote in them. Um, so I can't imagine anyone, you know, having a magical moment in the next couple of weeks prior to the Iowa voting. And what's confusing me is that I know that Trump is easily the strongest candidate. I know that he's got the technical incumbency. What I can understand is how he can lead by such a large margin unless he had true incumbency, because he's not far off from where Biden is with literal incumbency in a field that only includes two people, only one of which has any name recognition, and she's the hippie grandma. Uh, honestly, he's outperforming the expectations that I had. I thought he would settle into a holding pattern at around 60. And I said if he got to 60, that's effectively the end of the contest, because there's no longer enough voters that are outside of the Trump camp to really, I mean, even if you only had one, or, one other candidate, I can't imagine that they would prevail. The thing is that if DeSantis or Haley drops, even if they endorse the other, that doesn't necessitate that at least a minority of the extra votes don't go to Trump as well anyway. So it's basically a done deal now. But even with all of the advantages that he has and getting a boost from being constantly persecuted and martyred and therefore also getting free publicity in the process, um, I mean, I can't think of a methodology by which he could be so high in the polling, actually. He's running about three points ahead of where I figured he would sort of settle into a linear pattern Going forward, he gets a boost after winning Iowa, and that's really, depending on the margin, it's either that or Super Tuesday when it ends, depending on what happens in the other first states. It could be Nevada, it could be South Carolina, uh, but really, by Super Tuesday, we would be assured that Donald Trump would be nominee. I don't think we're going to have to wait for that. In fact, I don't even think we really have to wait for Iowa. By the way, I will be live streaming the Iowa uh, caucus results, uh, trust me, as well as New Hampshire and these other starting states. I will definitely stream on Super Tuesday because now I'm in a time zone where I can actually do that. Uh, I may have to move my setup to a different room uh, in order to not disturb people sleeping. Uh, but it is important, so I'll be giving the live commentary for a number of hours during those nights. It's going to be a fun time. But link in the description, uh, we've got that new RCP poll that shows the uh, GOP nomination polling for that process. Um, Trump is just so far out ahead that it, it really does look more like an incumbent rather than a non-incumbent race. And that's what a lot of analysts aren't getting. Trump is getting that quasi-incumbent treatment. That's why the norm in Iowa, which is that the front runner doesn't win, including 2016 with Trump, including Biden, of course, when he ran... Uh, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. It's abnormal for the person who wins Iowa, especially if they get the Vander Plaats endorsement, to then go on to become nominee. Usually they win Iowa, uh, and then they, they fail later on. Ted Cruz, for example. But that's in non-incumbent nominations. Normally, when you have an incumbent, you don't really have much of a primary at all. Uh, see the Democratic Party for evidence of this. But Trump, while facing that field, is still getting that same treatment from the voters, which is kind of helpful when the voters are the ones that choose the nominee. At least, unless there's a brokered convention. The real question right now is looking forward in indictment gate, do you have, during the primaries, do you have the criminal charges followed through with a verdict? Uh, that, that would be unknown quantity number one. And there's always the remote possibility that Donald Trump gets off scot-free, 
which would be interesting. I don't think it's very likely, because if you look at the composition of the legal system, kangaroo courts are quite common, especially when you're a political dissident. Which is funny, because he's also a former president while being a political outsider at the same time. Haven't really seen that before in U.S. history. Pretty abnormal. But anyway, uh, the other thing is, will the GOP hang itself with a brokered convention? Uh, Donald Trump is running from house arrest at the Mar-a-Lago, and they chicken out, they get cold feet and say, no, 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 we can't do this, and so they try to change the convention rules or something, disqualify a bunch of Trump delegates, um, disqualify him and say we refuse to nominate this man, we're nominating, you know, the runner-up, which would probably be DeSantis, I think. If it was Haley, then you look forward to four more years of Biden if it's either DeSantis or Haley, by the way, that would be the nominee. Because most of the MAGA voters would refuse to vote for them at this point. Be a shit show. Uh, you could have a Biden clean sweep at that point, sweeping up, you know, states as red as Ohio or <laughs> South Carolina certainly would be uh, on the chopping block. Uh, and Trump would get his revenge. Uh, the, the unit party would be crippled in part because the Republicans would suffer so much down ballot that third party candidates might creep in. The Republicans could end up sealing their own fate and causing their own demise if they ignore the fact that Trump at this point effectively is already the nominee. He's being treated that way by now a near super majority of Republican voters. He's at fucking 63 points. If he was only in the low 50s, he would still have an ingrained advantage and a very high likelihood of winning. The other unknown quantity. Who drops out and when? Uh, I think, is Hutchinson even still there? I don't think anybody cares. Uh, he said he would make his decision after Thanksgiving, and, you know, it's almost almost a month later, you still haven't made one. Ramaswamy has dropped off a cliff and is nowhere to be seen. He's only in there at this point to give fiery speeches. Christie will stay in stubbornly, at least for some time, because he's enjoying doing the TDS talk show circuit. Uh, really, Haley and DeSantis are the only ones that should be in other than Trump at this point. And I think if the rest of the field evaporated, Trump would hit 65. I think he'd gobble up. I think right now he's probably gobbling up uh, Ramaswamy voters that see the writing on the wall more than anything else. But his actual number being so good is almost a little bit confusing to me. And I say this as someone who is very much on the Trump train and expects him to win the nomination and has a, a considerable chance of winning the general election, even if he's in a jail cell at the time. Setting up for a very juicy constitutional crisis, by the way, that I'm sure would uh, result in some extra live streams when all the leftoids decide to riot in another fiery but mostly peaceful protest. That's about all. Peace out.